So next up, we have uh, a chapter uh, written by Mr. Mike Pinder uh, called Innovation Has a Much Bigger Role to Play. So with that, Mike, I'll give you the floor. Thank you very much. Yes, just echoing what everybody else has said, it's an absolute privilege and honor to be uh, working alongside a very talented bunch of people coming at the same uh, same issues from different lenses and offering different perspectives on uh, common things that we're all experiencing in our individual domains. Um, so yeah, the, the, the purpose of my chapter was to really be a disruptive troublemaker. That's how I really sort of see myself and as, us as innovators. And it was it's super important to be able to have a critical perspective on innovation. I don't think we discuss innovation critically enough. So that's really where the value of this book comes from is us openly doing that and having the courage to do that. Um, so the, the purpose for me was to take stock of where innovation is today um, and then look at what it needs to do in the future um, to be a, a force for good in, to, in tackling some of the big ecosystem challenges that we're collectively facing. Um, so I wanted it to be a collective rally cry in a, in a constructive troublemaker-ish way. Um, to, to, from my perspective, from working with large corporates all over the world, really, what do we need to do? How do we make innovation play a much bigger role in the, in the world than it's currently doing? Um, so through through the chapter, I was talking about yeah innovation being seen as a more broadly as, as a positive thing for us. There's this pro innovation bias that we've all been talking about um, in in our discussions today, um, and that's linked to the fundamental economic logic. It's intertwined into our values. It's it's part of our culture. It's it's very hard to be able to challenge that. But there are indeed drastic negative consequences on, on the environment and on social and economic levels. But it's it's a very subtly embedded in our consciousness um, as innovators um, and we need to start to un unpick this to be able to change it um, and over the last sort of 20 years or so that a lot of work's been done by large corporates to try and imitate startup ways of working we've codified the innovation process so that we can um, replicate it at scale um, and, and and try and solve business as usual problems but what is the next step for innovation and uh, what do we need to do to evolve the innovation process getting away from just solving customer centric problems quite simply that's not enough we can do a lot better innovation has a much bigger and better role to play than just looking at individual needs and problems or or even uh, uh, market segments we need to start evolving the process to look at um, the, the big complex wicked multi-stakeholder ecosystem problems that we're facing if that's not too big of a mouthful but we have bigger ecosystem level things to look at and innovation is a key role to play in that so we need to develop a, a more nuanced approach to innovation that isn't just a one-size-fits-all approach that we apply hoping that radical or disruptive and architectural innovations will come out you know we've all seen a lot of innovation theater in the last 20 years uh, we need to get away from that we need to get away from this theater productions we need to deliver the right kind of impact that solves the big grand challenges so the key takeaways i wanted to to, to give people were that we need to move away from this mere outside in perspective i know that's still quite a novelty for large corporates is just having an outside in lens at all but that's really not enough we need to as practitioners develop new approaches to different strategic innovation types um, and getting away from this one size fits all thinking that design thinking lean startup and business model innovation will automatically solve all the types of challenges we face they simply won't and we've seen that um, so we need to evolve the process and um, people like World Economic Forum are doing a great job in this area and the, in they recently launched the Scale 360, which is a circular innovation ecosystem level at the government and regional level um, process that redesign, redesigns the front end of the innovation process, really looking at the how, you know, how do we get these stakeholders together? How do we understand and prioritize the biggest challenges? So it's sort of design thinking on steroids at the big complex multi ecosystem layer um, and making that accessible to people uh, to, to find new ways of solving the big challenges. So um, there's that level on, on the process, on the how and the what, but there's also I wanted to talk briefly about the you know, redesigning the organizations themselves. We, we clearly know that um, when we have the tensions between exploiting and exploring, you can't just do that in the same organizational structure. We need to challenge the fundamental reasons as to why organizations exist. And, and Michael was talking about this earlier in you know, Adam Smith's and the, the industrial 
prescriptive management models that just don't work when trying to tackle these big ecosystem challenges. We need to think about different organizational structures that can support these new innovation types. Um, and it's not an easy task. And um, it, you know, us coming together is great to sort of point out where this needs to go and, and sort of plant some flags in the ground. Um, but it's, it's, it's a complex challenge. Um, there are some outlier companies, like energy companies like Neste and uh, apparel companies like um, Patagonia that are really putting this purpose-driven layer at, at the forefront. And they're saying, right, we exist to do this. This is a clear uh, vision. Then they recruit people who have this intrinsic motivation to do that. Um, we need the tools and the methods to be able to enable achieving those goals and processes. And, and I see us as a innovation practitioners, we have the responsibility to make those evolutions to enable um, these grand challenges to be tackled. And so, yeah, the chapter was really to discuss all these complex issues and say, right, this is the area that we need to move in. We need to, first of all, look at the global sustainability challenges we're facing, as we've seen with the UN sustainability goals, they're clearly known, but it's really about then looking at the ecosystem desirability, not just customer centric desirability, then looking at the business model viability around that, and then the technical feasibility to enable those. So it's a subtle reconfiguration of the front end of the innovation process that's needed, along with the culture and the values that some of the other very talented authors have been talking about today. And, uh, and that's really where I see the, the forefront of, of what needs to happen next. So I guess it was maybe a good place to be at the end of the book to sort of point in that direction, maybe where we should be headed. Well, very good. Thank you, Mike. And I think you make an excellent point that, you know, I think thinking, ha having organizations think much broader and larger about, you know, the, the implications of our innovations is in many ways a cure for innovation theater. It gets us past the pettiness of just trying to look innovative and generally trying to be innovative uh, by going beyond just what's next incrementally, but thinking broadly, how can we make a, a positive impact in the world? And so I, I think you're absolutely right. The innovation has a much, much bigger role to play in the organization by helping us really steer the organization and living out values and uh, in, in pursuing innovation in this way, rather than the way we've been doing it for the past 10 or 15 years. Uh, I think that's a great point. And you, and you raised some excellent points about what's next for innovation. And I, I don't know that we all, all have the answers per se, but I, I'm glad that we're raising that question, you know, and, and I think you're, you're pointing us in the right direction. So thank you for that. Thank you so much.